Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Paradhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagirid Bharadhari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagirid Bharadhari Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bharadari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bharadari Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nitai Gora Ribo, Haribo, Haribo, Haribo. Jai Jai Prabhupada, 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 Prabhupada. Or Premanandi Haribo Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pracharini Nirvishe Shashanyavadi Paschachade Shatarini Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nesta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki Umma Jnana Timarandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanjena Tasmai Shri Kurave Namah 
श्री चैतन्य मनोभिष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं कदा ददाति स्वपदिक वंदेहम श्रीगुरो श्रीयता परकमल श्रीगुरवैष्णवस्ताग्रजात सहगन रघुनता थम सजीव साद्वैत सवदूत पर्जन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्णपद सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखा नितंस्या हे कृष्ण खरण सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कंता राधा कंता नमोस्तते सप्तकांचन घोरंगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशकौपातरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पे वचा पतित नाम भवानेभ्यो वैष्णवीभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीहद्वैत गाधार श्रीवासदी गोर्भक्तविंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे so as we are approaching the auspicious period of krishna janmashtami i've been asked to speak on the past times of lord krishna particularly on the later past times meaning dwarka leela so i was reading there in the 10th canto lord krishna's past times in there and before they introduce before sukadeva goswami narrates the past time of lord krishna and how he has his first marriage to rukmini sukadeva goswami first of all describes about lord balaram and the marriage of lord balaram so as we're coming up to balaram jayanti that's also auspicious so i thought i would just begin telling about the past time of lord balaram and then we'll speak about lord krishna so lord balaram actually it was arranged that he accepted the daughter of maharaj raivata as his wife right his daughter was called raivati and this is described in the shrimad bhagavatam in ninth canto it describes how maharaj raivati wanted to find a suitable husband for his daughter but he was perplexed who was actually the suitable husband so he took his daughter with him and they went up to satyaloka somehow this maharaj raivata he was no ordinary king he could actually travel through the universe and he could go all the way up to satyaloka where lord brahma resides and he took his daughter with him up to satyaloka and they met with lord brahma but they had to wait before they could meet lord brahma because when they got there they were told that lord brahma's attending a concert just now there's a musical concert taking place so when the concert is finished then you can meet lord brahma so in this way maharaj raivata and his daughter were waiting for the concert to finish and after some time the concert finished and then lord brahma came and he met with the king and the king was describing to lord brahma the situation that 
you know, I want your advice, you know, who is the suitable husband for my daughter? And Maharaj Revata had a list of different men who were proposals for his daughter. But when he said the names, then Lord Brahma laughed. And Lord Brahma told the king, he said, you know, all of these kings have passed away. And Maharaj Revata was surprised. He said, what? How could they have passed away? I was just with them. But Lord Brahma explained to Maharaj Revata that, yes, well, you've come to my planet and you've been waiting here for some time. So you have to remember that the time on my planet is very different from the time on Earth planet. That one moment of time on my planet is equal to one year on that planet on your planet Earth. So while you've been waiting here, so many kings have come and gone and all of their dynasties are all finished. And so then Maharaj Ribata thought then what to do? Who, who will, how will I get the husband for my daughter? And Lord Brahma said, don't worry, you go back to Earth and Lord Balaram is there and he's performing his pastimes. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and you can go there. He will make a suitable husband for your daughter. So Maharaj Rivata came back with his uh, daughter and they came back to the earth planet and they found out Lord Balaram. But when Lord Balaram saw the girl, he was surprised because they were from previous yuga. So in the previous yuga, people were much taller than they are today. So Lord Balaram thought, anyway, Lord Balaram, he's Haladara. So he, take, he took his plow and with his plow, he just knocked the woman down to size. So she would make a suitable wife for him. So in this way, Lord Balarama got one wife. Actually, Lord Balaram has two wives. There's another wife, Varuni. So that's a different pastime. Anyway, this pastime with Revata is uh, described there by Sukadeva Goswami. And then he goes on to narrate about how Lord Krishna got his first wife. The very first wife of Lord Krishna is Rukmini. And she is sometimes called Vidarbi because her father is the king of Vidarbha. What's the name of Rukmini's father? Uh, Maharaja. Oh, I'm forgetting. Anyway. Hmm? Bishmaka. Okay, Bishmaka. Right. Good. Thank you, Prabhu. Bishmaka, the father of Rukmini. He was a pious man. He was pious, but he had five sons. And the oldest son, particularly called Rukmi, was not very good. He was an enemy of Lord Krishna. So, uh, Rukmini had been hearing the glories of Lord Krishna because her father, Bhishmaka, had a palace and he was pious. So many different people would come and visit, saintly people would come there. And when they came, many of them would describe the pastimes of Lord Krishna. And they would talk about the wonderful activities of Lord Krishna and his pastimes and his activities and his character and qualities. Because Lord Krishna was personally present on the planet. 5,000 years later, we're still talking about Krishna. So you could imagine 5,000 years ago when Krishna was personally present on the planet, everyone was talking about Krishna, they were hearing about Krishna. And Rukmini 
she was hearing also about Lord Krishna. We have to understand that Rukmini is not an ordinary woman, but she is actually the direct expansion of the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi. So she had come to take part in the pastimes with Lord Krishna. And she came as Vidarbi or Rukmini, the daughter of the king of Vidarbha. So she was hearing about Lord Krishna and within her mind, she decided that Krishna would make the best husband for me, that I don't want any other man for a husband except Krishna. Lord Krishna should be my husband. And she was very determined like this, but there was a problem. The problem was, of course, in the Vedic culture, women are not given independence, not much independence anyway. And she had this older brother, Rukmi, and Rukmi was a friend of Sishupal. So he hated Krishna. And he decided to arrange the marriage of his sister with Sishupal. Maharaj Bhishmaka, the father of Rukmini, he was, he was a good man and he knew about Krishna. And he also thought Krishna would be a very nice husband for my daughter. But he couldn't do much about it because he's an older man and he's got these five sons. And this Rukmi is the oldest son. And the oldest son, you know, he carries the weight. He is the voice in the family. So Maharaj Bhishmaka was obliged to give in to his oldest son and let him arrange the marriage of Rukmini with Tishupal. So Rukmini was in plight. What to do? She didn't want to marry Sishupal. She wanted to marry Krishna. So she wrote a letter. She was a, an intelligent woman, of course, the daughter of a, she's a princess, though she has a good intelligence. And she wrote out a nice letter to Lord Krishna and described her situation. And she told in her letter to Lord Krishna that I am prepared to take birth many times to achieve you as my husband. I'm ready to go through many lives in order to achieve you that I can become your wife. If I cannot get you in this life, then I, will pre I am prepared to wait for the next life. In the next life, I will do austerities. I will continue my austerities until I can get you for my husband. So in this way, Rukmini expressed her great determination to Lord Krishna. And she also went on to describe to Lord Krishna that although my marriage is arranged to Sishupal, there is a manner in which you can come and you can take me for your wife. That you come here, you come to our place, you come to this uh, Vidarbha, and you come with your entourage. And when I go to the Durga temple the day before the wedding, at that time I'm coming out of the palace. So that's a good time for you to take me, to kidnap me. In other words, Rukmini was encouraging Lord Krishna that he should do Rakshasa style marriage, right? There's different kinds of marriages. And so this is Rakshasa style, where the man kidnaps a woman. <laughs> of course, the woman was very eager. Rukmini is very eager to be taken by Lord Krishna. But of course, it's against her family. And to go against the family, that is a serious thing. Because the family have already arranged for her 
that she should marry Sishupala. So Lord uh, Rukmini gave her letter to a, a Brahmana, a trustworthy Brahmana. And it was confidential. Nobody knew. Nobody in her palace knew what was happening. And she told the Brahmana, you must go immediately to Dwarka and you must give this letter to Lord Krishna. There is not much time left. So the Brahmana was a faithful servant and he went off to Dwarka and he got to Dwarka. He crossed all the different boundaries and came into Dwarka and managed to meet with Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna, of course, is very respectful to the Brahmanas. We all say the prayer, Namo Brahmana Devaya, Go Brahmana Hitaya Cha, Jagat Hitaya Krishnaya, Govindaya Namo Nama. That Lord Krishna is, is very dear to the cows and the Brahmanas. And the cows and the brahmanas are very dear to Lord Krishna. So when this brahmana came there, then Lord Krishna received him very nicely. He bowed down to him. Then he washed his feet. And then he, mas he, he fed him. Then he massaged his legs because the brahmana had been walking. He'd walked all the way. He'd come all the way by foot. And Lord Krishna massaged his legs. And, and then he inquired from him that, how are you, my dear Brahmana? Are you executing your religious duties without any difficulty? And are you satisfied in your activities? This is very important in cultivating the mode of goodness that we should execute our religious duties, just like we have material and spiritual duties. Materially, you have obligations to maintain family and so on. And spiritually, we have obligations to our spiritual teachers to chant the holy name and to worship Krishna. So in this way, Lord Krishna was inquiring from the Brahmana. And then he requested the Brahmana, so kindly tell me, why have you come here to see me? And so at that time, the Brahmana brought out the letter from Rukmini. And he read the letter to Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna hears of the plight of Rukmini. And he immediately agrees. Yes, I have to go there. I will go there. That Lord Krishna can understand that Rukmini is a suitable girl to make his to make a wife for him. That she has all good qualities. She is very well behaved. She is very religious and chaste, and above all, she's a devotee. She's fully devoted to Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna gets his chariot ready and he brings the Brahmana with him and together they go off to Vidarbha. Lord Krishna comes there. And when Lord Balaram heard what was happening, Lord Balaram could understand something of the situation. And Lord Balaram thought, I better also go and I'll bring an army with me because we may need to protect Lord Krishna. Of course, Lord Krishna doesn't need protection. But Lord Balaram is in the mood of service, being the servant of Krishna. That is Lord Balaram's very special position that although he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and he has all the opulences, just as Lord Krishna is Bhagavan, Lord Balaram is also Bhagavan, but Lord Balaram comes in the mood as a servant of Krishna. 
So when Krishna goes off to Vidarbha, he didn't tell Lord Balaram, but Lord Balaram somehow, because he's the Supreme Lord also, he knows what's happening and he arranges to come there with an army. Anyway, Lord Krishna had gone off with the Brahmana and they got there to Vidarbha and everything was arranged for the wedding. All of the friends of Sishupal had come. All of these demon friends of Sishupal, like Jara Sanda and Salva and Dantavarka, they're all there. And they said, they're all saying, if Krishna comes here, we will certainly see him off. We're not going to allow him to come here and disrupt this marriage. They're all, of course, the demons, they're all the enemies of Lord Krishna. And so they're all there for the marriage, waiting to see. And then Lord Krishna happens to come there, he reaches there. And when Maharaj Bhishmaka hears that Lord Krishna has come, he's very pleased. And he immediately comes and receives Lord Krishna and he makes a nice reception. He arranges his accommodation and everything. And so then it happened. It came to the time for the wedding to go to bring Rukmini to prepare for the marriage, to take the vows. And first of all, they had to go and worship Ambika, which means actually mother, like Mother Durga. So while she was going to the temple, she had gone into the temple and she was just coming out. And people were all seeing the beauty of Rukmini. And it's described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it describes that she was so beautiful, she was so attractive that men would see her, they would just faint. They would fall unconscious just seeing her charm and her beauty. <laughs> it's, it, it's just inconceivable. But this was the nature of Rukmini, that she was, because she is the goddess of fortune. She's not of this world. And so all of the kings, they were all, oh, oh, that, she's so beautiful. She's so charming. And Lord Krishna sees her and Lord Krishna simply picks her up and puts her on his chariot and he goes off. And <laughs> it, all, of, all of the kings, all of the associates of Sishupala, they're all angry. And they said, this is like a jackal taking the feast of taking the lion's food away. This Krishna is like a jackal, he's taking away the food of the lion. But what can they do? Krishna is there taking Rukmini. They say, we should go. We should stop him. But they cannot do anything. Lord Krishna is prepared. He can fight them. And they cannot stop Krishna. And then Lord Balaram comes with his army. And when Lord Balaram comes with his army, then there's no question of them being able to stop Krishna. But Rukmini's Elder brother, Rukmi, he was really angry because he was the one who had arranged the marriage. So it was a really, it was a, it was a, a great uh, disappointment to him. But he, he made a vow that I'm going to go after them and I'm going to bring back my sister. I'm not going to let that Krishna take away my sister like this. I'm going to go after them and I'm going to bring my sister back. And if I cannot, I make a vow. I won't come back until I can bring back my sister. So this was the foolishness of Rukmi. He thought he could actually defeat Krishna. Anyway, he set off after Krishna and, and then Krishna sees him coming. And so Krishna waits to meet him and there's some little battle and Krishna easily defeats him and Krishna is about to kill him. He raises his sword 
But then Rukmini comes and pleads, oh no, he's my brother, please don't kill him. So Lord Krishna thought, I, you know, this is Rukmini, she's my wife now, she's going to be my wife, we're going to get married. And she's pleading with me not to kill her brother, so I will spare him. But what he did was he took his sword and he began to cut off different parts of his hair and left him with, you know, a piece of hair here and a piece of hair. There's all patches and he looked really ridiculous. So it was very humiliating for Rukmi to be put into that situation. So he was, of course, what could he do? He was completely defeated by Lord Krishna. And then Lord Balaram came there with his army and Lord Balaram sees Rukmini like this and he chastised, he chastises Lord Krishna. He said, oh, Krishna, how could you do this? He is your brother-in-law. You know, you should be more respectful to your relatives. It's not a very nice way to treat your brother-in-law to do like this. And then Balaram was <laughs> taking advantage of the situation to try to uh, make it easier for Rukmini and for Rukmi to adjust. Anyway, Rukmi, he doesn't go home. He stays there. He, he vowed I wouldn't go home. So he didn't go home. Wherever he was, he stayed there and he built a town there. He developed a town there. Became like his, his new home. Later on, of course, Rukmi gets another problem. Later on, it happened. There was marriage. It was arranged marriages between the daughter of Rukmi and the son of Krishna or grandson of Krishna. And at that time, they had a, a game of dice. And Lord Balaram was challenged to a game of dice with Rukmi. And they were betting different amounts of gold coins. And they began with 10 gold coins, then it became 100 gold coins, then it became 1,000 gold coins, then it became 100,000 gold coins, then it became 10 million gold coins, one after another. So in the beginning, Rukmi was winning. Lord Balaram is not very expert at chess. And so in the beginning, Rukmi was, was winning. But then Lord Balaram won. And when Lord Balaram won, then Rukmi denied it. He said, no, I'm the winner. So, you know, Balaram said, what? well, all right, then we will bet 100 million gold coins, right? This was a huge wager. And again, Balaram won. And again, Rukmi said, no, I'm the winner. And even there was a voice from the heavens which said, Balaram is actually the winner. And, and Rukmi had his friends, you know, like uh, the king of Chedi and these different people. They were all his friends and supporters. And they were saying, yes, Rukmi is the winner. Rukmi is the winner. Like this. And so Lord Balaram, he got a bit angry. <laughs> so he took his club and, <laughs> and he just killed Rukmi on the spot. And so he killed him. He didn't hesitate. So at that time, Lord Krishna was present because there was a marriage. So all the family was there and Rukmini was also there. So Lord Balaram killed the brother of Rukmini. And Rukmini, she, uh, of course, she was upset for her brother being killed. Lord Krishna, he couldn't say anything. Because if he says anything, well, Balaram is his brother. And Rukmi is his wife. Rukmini is his wife. So if he says, well done, Balaram, then Rukmini will be not be pleased. And if he criticizes Balaram, then Balaram will not be pleased. You know? So Krishna just kept quiet. <laughs> Sometimes better not to say anything than to say something. You say something, you take somebody's side, you get, you get problems, you know. So better not to take anybody's side. So Krishna didn't side with 
Balaram and he didn't side with the, the family of Rukmi either. <laughs> so this is uh, Krishna's pastime here with Rukmini. Uh, Rukmini was his first wife and she's the, the most dear wife to Krishna. And it happened that Narada Muni liked uh, Rukmini so much that he brought her a Parijata flower from the heavenly planets. So this Parijata flower, of course we have Parijata flowers here, but they're not like the Parijata flowers from the heavenly planets. On the heavenly planets, they have Parijata flowers, which have such a, an amazing aroma that it, it attracts all the bees. And the aroma just pervades the area for many miles. It's so powerful. So Narada Muni brought the Parijata flower from the heavenly planets and gave it to Rukmini. Now, the problem was by this time, Lord Krishna already had another wife because he had already accepted Satyabhama. Satyabhama was the daughter of King Satrajit. Actually, the, at, at this time, before he accepted Satyabhama as his wife, he also accepted Jambavati because there was an intrigue of the Shaimantaka jewel. That was a, a big problem in Dwarka at one point. The Shaimantaka jewel had gone missing. And there, somehow Satrajit was making a rumor that Krishna has stolen the Shaimantaka jewel. And people were so foolish that they were even believing that Krishna has taken the Shaimantaka jewel. So Krishna went out to find out where is the jewel, what happened to it. And then Krishna ended up meeting with Jambavan because Jambavan had found the jewel and taken it, brought it back to his place and given it to his child to play with. So Krishna had gone into this cave where Jambavan was living and where this jewel was and where the child and everything was. And Krishna went in there and he ended up uh, when he came in there, then Jambavan saw an intruder. And he saw that this intruder wants to take this jewel. And so they began to fight. And Krishna fought with Jambavan for many days. I think 28 days or more. And people were waiting outside the cave for Krishna. And Krishna didn't come for such a long time. They became worried. They thought something has happened to Krishna. And they all went back to Dwarka. But actually Krishna was just engaged with battle with Jambavan for a long time. And they fought for so long, it took 28 days before Jambavan understood that this personality is non-different from Lord Rama. Now Jambavan, he had fought in the battle of Lanka. And he'd fought with Hanuman and the other monkeys on the side of Lord Rama against Ravan. And here's Jambavan fighting Krishna. But it was only when they fought for a long time, Jambavan could understand this is the personality of Godhead himself. He's not different from Lord Rama. And he's, Jambavan then surrendered to Lord Krishna. And at that time, he asked Lord Krishna, please accept my daughter by way of my apology to you for not recognizing you and for fighting with you. I want you to please take my daughter. So Jambavati was given to Lord Krishna as a wife. And then he came back to Dwarka with the Shaimantaka jewel. And at that time, Satrajit then gave his daughter, Satyabhama, because Satrajit realized he had also done a great mistake. And so to get forgive, forgiveness for that, he asked Lord Krishna, please accept my daughter as a wife. So Satyabhama became the wife for Lord Krishna. So these are the three 
principal wives, the first three wives of Lord Krishna. And there was great competition, especially between Rukmini and Satyabhama. And when Narada Muni brings the Parijata flower to Rukmini, then Lord Krishna knows that Satyabhama is going to be a little jealous of this. Because we know women's nature, right? One woman's got something, the other one doesn't, doesn't have it. Oh, this is not good. Why she got it? I should have got it. Why I don't have it? So in this way, Lord Krishna understands the minds of his wives, of course. So it happened that uh, Lord Krishna, at one point, he, he takes Satyabhama with him to go to the heavenly planets. They go to the heavenly planets to actually what happened was Lord Krishna went to the heavenly planets to return different valuable thing, ornaments which had been stolen by one demon. There was a demon Boma or Naraka. Narakasur, he was a, a demon. Actually, Narakasur was born from the womb of Bhumi, Mother Bhumi, the Earth. When Mother Earth had, when the Earth planet had fallen into the bottom of the universe, at that time, Lord Varaha appeared and he picked up the Earth planet from the bottom of the universe. So at that time, when Lord Varaha picked up the earth planet, he also impregnated Mother Bhumi. And she gave birth to a child who was actually the child of Lord Varaha. But this child, in the beginning, is a very good devotee. He had good association. The mother brought him up to be a very nice devotee. But he fell into bad company. He got bad association. He began to associate with people like Bana. Bana was the eldest son of Bali Maharaj. And Bana was a demon. So he was associating with these demons and he became very demoniac also. Try to understand the importance of association. Prabhupada used to say, association is 98% of our Krishna consciousness. So we maintain these Krishna conscious centers just so that all of us can be benefited with the association of devotees. Without association, it's very difficult to maintain any Krishna consciousness. So this Bana, or rather Boma, became a big demon. Boma became a demon. By associating with Bana, he became a demon. So this Boma was the son of Bumi. And Bumi had, Bumi is actually she is an expansion of Satyabhama. So therefore, when Lord Krishna came to fight Bomasura, he, bought, he brought Satyabhama with him. Because there was a, a, a condition that Mother Bhumi would only allow her son to be killed with her permission. That without her permission, her son should not be killed by anyone. So Lord Krishna brought Satyabhama with him. When he came there to fight Bomasura, he brought Satyabhama with him. Not just for a pleasure trip, not just an excursion, you know, that Women like to go places and enjoy and see the sight. But he brought her with him because he wants to get her permission 
when he goes to kill Bomasura. And so it happened that there was a big fight and Bomasura was fighting ferociously and the situation became very bad. Satyabhama then said to Krishna, oh, quick, kill him. Don't, don't prolong it anymore. Quickly kill him. And so with the sanction of Satyabhama, Lord Krishna could kill Bomasura. And this Bomasura, of course, he had been very, very uh, mischievous. He'd, he had kidnapped and taken prisoner 16,100 princesses, 16,100 young ladies from royal families were all being held prisoner in the, in the, uh, the kingdom of this Bomasura. And this is why Lord Krishna had come there to kill him so that these ladies could be freed. Not only these ladies could be freed, but also Bomasura was so powerful and so mischievous, he had stolen the earrings of Mother Aditi. Now, Mother Aditi, she's the mother of the demigods. And this Bomasura had stolen the earrings from Mother Aditi. And then he's keeping all of these young ladies prisoners also. So Indra had actually come to Lord Krishna. Lord Indra had come to Krishna himself, requesting Lord Krishna's help. That please, can you go there and kill this demon Bomasura and get these things back and free these ladies? So Lord Krishna went there. And after killing the demon, then... Uh, he sees that these young ladies, that they're in difficult situation because no one will accept them now. They've been taken by another man. And as soon as they're touched by another person, then no man will have anything to do with them. So they all looked at Lord Krishna all 16,100 princesses, they all looked at Lord Krishna and they prayed to Lord Krishna that you please accept us as your wives. So in this way, Lord Krishna, because he's an ocean of mercy and he's very kind on the fallen souls. So Lord Krishna accepted these 16,100 princesses as his wives, and he brought them all to Dwarka, and they had a wedding. All 16,100 marriages were performed simultaneously in 16,100 palaces. Each queen was given her own palace and each queen was given her individual uh, wedding ceremony. What, what's it called? Uh, what do they call the wedding ceremony? Vivava, right? I wouldn't know. I'm a sannyasi, you know. I... <laughs> vivava, this Vivava, this thing. So they did this wedding for them and uh, and when they did the wedding, Nanda and Yasoda, or oh, Vasudev and Devaki, they also attended. All the relatives, they also attended each of the weddings. Although the weddings were all taking place simultaneously, that they could expand themselves. Not only did Krishna expand himself 16,100 times, but Krishna's mother and father and relatives, they also expanded themselves 16,100 times. And they all came to each of Krishna's weddings, which took place all at one time. This is the, op this is the inconceivable opulence of Lord Sri Krishna. It's also described by the Acharyas, who are these 16,000 princesses, that these are actually 
uh, it said there are 16 potencies of Lord Krishna. There are 16 potencies of Lord Krishna and the, each potency expands, is divided into a thousand sections. So then you have 16,000 princesses and they all become the wives of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is like the moon and just like the moon has different phases. So there are some six, 16 phases of the moon. So in the same way, uh, these gopis are coming in the form of princesses to become the wives of Lord Krishna. So in this way, Lord Krishna has so many wives. Uh, he had actually earlier, prior to marrying the 16,100 princesses, he married already some other ladies also because Lord Krishna has 16,108 queens, right? 108 queens. So there are eight principal queens of Lord Krishna. Just as you have eight, we have the Astasaki gopis in Mayapur, right? You have Tungavija, Chitra, Champakalata, Lalita, Vishaka, Induleka, Rangadevi, Sudevi. These are the Astasakis who are there in Mayapur with Radha Madhava. So in Dwarka, Lord Krishna also has 16,108 queens. And of these 16,108, eight are the principal queens. The principal queens. We mentioned first of all Rukmini and then Satyabhama and Jambavati. And then the, there were other queens because it happened one time Lord Krishna was with Arjuna and they were going for a hunting expedition. Uh, they were hunting somewhere in the forest. Uh, Kshatriyas, they have to do that. It's necessary. Go and hunt the wild animals because some beasts, they give trouble to the great sages who are there in the forest. So one time Lord Krishna was with Arjuna in the forest. And they happened to come by the river Yamuna. And they saw near to the river Yamuna, there was a young woman who was extremely attractive. And they wondered what she was doing here in this, in that area in the middle of the jungle. So Lord Krishna sent Arjuna that go and ask this young woman, what is she doing here? So Arjuna went to the young woman and requested her that please kindly to tell me, who are you? What is your identity? And the young woman explained to Arjuna, she said, I am Kalindi and I am the daughter of the sun god. And I have come here to do penance and austerities. My father has built a house for me in the Yamuna and I'm here to do penances and austerities because I will only accept Lord Vishnu for my husband. <laughs> so she wanted to have Lord Vishnu for her husband. So Arjuna went back to Lord Krishna and he told Lord Krishna who this woman is, that she's the daughter of the sun god. And she's doing penances and austerities until she gets Lord Vishnu for her husband. And so Lord Krishna told her, you bring her. And in this way, Lord Krishna took Kalindi and they brought her back to Dwarka and Lord Krishna married Kalindi. She also became one of his wives. And then there was another time Lord Krishna got another wife. He went to uh, he went to Avantipur. You know Avantipur? Today it's called Ujjain. Right? Sandipani Muni's ashram was there. So Lord Krishna had gone there to Avantipur. And there there was also a young young lady, young doctor the daughter of a royal king, and she needed to be married. But 
there was a condition. The condition was that whoever marries this girl, they have to, they have to be able to tame seven wild bulls. These bulls had very big horns and they were very fierce, nasty, angry bulls. You know, bulls are, can be very passionate. They have a lot of passion. And so these bulls were very nasty wild bulls with big horns. And although the, the king's daughter was very beautiful and attractive, many princesses princes came and tried, but they were just simply gored by the bulls. They were, you know, killed or something. They, they were not successful, could not succeed. So when Lord Krishna came there and Lord Krishna met King Namnajit, King Namnajit, the daughter is called Namnajiti. She's also called Satya. So uh, King Namnajit, he understood Krishna as the Supreme Lord and he, and he was happy to give his daughter to Krishna to make a wife. But still he requested Krishna that please kindly, just to satisfy everyone, you please also fulfill the demand which I had put on everyone else. Because so many other men have come here and they also wanted to marry my daughter. And I told them they had to tame these seven bulls. Now you have come and I know you're suitable to be her husband. I don't want anyone else to marry her. But you please fulfill this condition. You please go and tame these seven wild bulls. So then Lord Krishna, he expands himself seven times and he goes into the arena and with each of his expansions, he's able to bind up these bulls. Not a very big task for Lord Krishna. He can expand himself unlimited numbers of times. So seven, nothing. It's not a big task for Lord Krishna. And bulls, well, Krishna's already fought. He's already been to Mathura and he's fought with people like Mustika and Chanura. He's already killed those wrestlers who Kamsa had. They had bodies of steel. But Krishna made light work of it. It wasn't a big thing for Krishna. And similarly, these bulls, it was not a very difficult task. And quickly, Krishna tied them up and bound them. And in this way, Nagnajiti became also one of Krishna's wives. Of course, the other princes were all angry and they tried to challenge, they tried to fight. No, no, you shouldn't take. <laughs> they would always try to resist, try to oppose Krishna, but Krishna could always defeat them. Wherever there is Krishna and Arjun, there is victory, morality, extraordinary power, and opulence. So certainly Krishna is always victorious. And then, so he's got uh, Kalindi and Nag Nagnajiti or Satya. And then there was another woman he got from, he got from Ayodhya. He went to Ayodhya. And there, there was a Swayamvara ceremony for the daughter, oh, the sister of the king. Her name was Mitravinda. So Lord Krishna came there and the Swayamvara ceremony and he took Mitravinda for his wife. In this way, this is six. And then there was two more. There was Lakshmana and Bhadra. Lakshmana also, it was Swayamvara ceremony. Again, Krishna just... Swayamvara ceremonies, usually they would be arranged for young women who were very, very qualified, who were highly in demand, you could say. Many men wanted to marry them. So they would be given a Swayamvara ceremony 
where they could pick a husband for themselves. And they were, all the different men would come and it, all, each man will be thinking, surely she will pick me, she will want me, she will want me for a husband. But Lord Krishna would come to the Swayamvara ceremony and he wouldn't, he would just take the girl. <laughs> he wouldn't care about the other princesses. And of course, the girl is also happy that she, when she sees Lord Krishna taking her, the only people who are not happy are all the other princes. And they come and they chase Krishna, try to fight, try to stop him. So this is the opulence of Krishna. Krishna, 5,000 years ago, had 16,108 wives. But he could have had 16 million wives because Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He has achyantya shakti. He has inconceivable potencies. And he is the supreme enjoyer. Just like in the material world, a man will enjoy the company of his wife. So Krishna doesn't enjoy with just one wife. Krishna enjoys with unlimited wives. But at the same time, he can expand himself to be with each and every wife. And this was seen by Narada Muni. Narada Muni personally went to Dwarka and he went to visit Krishna in all the different palaces. Now, usually when a yogi will expand himself, it will be like a a reflection, a mirror image. Each of the expansions will do the same thing. You lift your hand, every expansion will also lift their hand. You know, everything is just done the same, mirror images. But when Krishna expands himself, he can expand completely independent. Each form, each expansion is completely independent of the original form of Krishna. So in this way, Krishna was living in Dwarka with each and every one of 16,108 wives, enjoying himself and having family life. Most of the time, Krishna would be at home. He would be in the palace with each and every one of his wives. And his wives were living with Krishna, but they would live like maid servants. They were all very great devotees. And although Krishna accepted them as his wife, they would live like maid servants and they would be, they would engage themselves in cleaning the palaces of Krishna. They would all work to clean the palace. They were so humble. They were so without pride, without you know, usually we think, oh, the husband is so rich, the wife will become proud and she will enjoy, she will want servants. But in Dwarka, Krishna's queens were living, they would live like maid servants. They would personally clean the palace. And you can see when Sudama came there to Dwarka and met with Lord Krishna, Rukmini was fanning Krishna. This was the mood of the wives of Lord Krishna, how they were all serving Krishna, how they were not in the mood of thinking, my husband should make me happy, but they were in the mood of devotees that they want to please Krishna. And they please Krishna by rendering service to Lord Krishna. So all of the different homes in Dwarka, Krishna would be engaged in different activities. In one home, Narada would go and he would see Krishna playing dice with his queen. And then he'd go to another home and he would see Krishna is playing with the children. Krishna also had children by his different queens. It said he had 10 boys and one girl by each queen. 
So there were a huge number of people living there in Dwarka. And they were all being maintained nicely. There were many, 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 many brahmanas also there to educate all the people. Because everyone's living there. They have to also get education. The children also need to be educated. In this way, the population of Dwarka was huge. And Lord Krishna is there enjoying his pastimes with, with all of his devotees. 16,108 times he's expanded. And when he will go to the Siddharma Assembly Hall to discuss the affairs, at that time, the 16,000 108 forms will become one form. They will all become one. And Krishna, in that one form, he will go to the assembly hall and he will sit in the assembly hall, in the Siddharma assembly hall, and he will hear what is the issue, what problems are there here in Dwarka. And then when the business is over, when everything is taken care of, then Krishna again will expand himself 16,108 times and each form will go back to the palace which he came from. In this way, Lord Krishna is performing his pastimes in Dwarka, showing the opulence of Dwarka. It is said that in Vaikuntha, the Lord of Vaikuntha he has only one goddess of fortune. But in Dwarka, Krishna has all these 16,108 queens all with him. So the pastimes of Dwarka, the position of Dwarka is far above the position of Vaikuntha. So it, it's, it is but, but in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, we hear, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has written there, that Krishna is perfect in Dwarka. He is more perfect in Mathura, and he is most perfect in Vrindavan. So there are, there are different moods, of course. We have to understand the mood in Dwarka is different from the mood in Vrindavan. The mood in Dwarka is Aishwarya. And with that Aishwarya, there's so much awe and reverence, great veneration and respect. That is the nature of opulence. But in Vrindavan, the mood is Madhurya. Because we know Vrindavan is the village. And the people in the village are all taking care of the cows. Nanda Maharaj is of Aishya. And Lord Krishna lived in the family of Nanda Maharaj. All of his childhood was spent there in the home of Nanda Maharaj. And every day Krishna would be with the cows. As a young boy, he'd play with the cows in the yard. And as soon as he grew up a little bit, uh, right from Kish, from Kishore to Poganda, like he would go out with the calves. As he grew up a little bit, he'd go out with the calves. So Krishna was always enjoying with the cows and the calves in Vrindavan, with all the cowherd boys, with the gopis, a very different mood from Dwarka. So the pastimes of Lord Krishna are so wonderful. We want to relish hearing topics of Lord Krishna. The topics of Lord Krishna are how we can give pleasure to the heart. Srimad Bhagavatam describes, Satam prasanga mama virya samvito bhavantirad karana rasayana kata Topics of Lord Krishna, 
when heard in the association of devotees, are very pleasing to the ear and to the heart, right? We, we want, anyway, the topic should go to the heart, from the ear to the heart. Huh? And by that process, by hearing nicely the topics of Krishna in the association of devotees, then we can advance progressively in the different stages of devotion. As it says, Shradhara Tir Bhaktir Anukramishati. Shraddha, this Shraddha, this is Asakti. And Shraddha, Rati, Rati, this is Bhava and Bhakti, Prima, Prima Bhakti. So once after another, the different stages of devotion are achieved by hearing the pastimes of Lord Krishna, the topics of Lord Krishna in the association of devotees. We all have a duty as devotees to regularly hear the topics of Lord Krishna. If we are hearing regularly, then we can never forget Krishna. We'll never go away from Krishna consciousness. So Srila Prabhupada himself taught us like that. Prabhupada himself used to hear devotees. He would have devotees read to him. And Prabhupada would enjoy hearing particularly his Krishna book. He has presented a very special, very unique book, this Krishna book, which is the summary study of the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, people will also say that, well, the 10th canto, we're supposed to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam from the beginning. Because when we look at the deity, we look first at the lotus feet, and then we look up towards the face. So the first two cantos of the Srimad Bhagavatam are the Pada Padma. They represent the lotus feet of Krishna. We should hear the Srimad Bhagavatam from the beginning. But the 10th canto, that is the shining face of the Lord. Before we look on the Lord's face, we should look first at his lotus feet and then progressively, gradually look up towards the face of the Lord. But Srila Prabhupada, while he gave us the 10th canto in the form of the Krishna book, he presented it in such a manner that even a lay person can understand. He made it very clear. And he did not go deeply into the pastimes of the Rasa Lila, which are the most confidential part of the 10th canto. But Srila Prabhupada wanted to begin the Krishna consciousness movement. And he knew he didn't have a lot of time. He didn't know how much time, how much opportunity he would get. So he wrote the Krishna book so that we could all have the opportunity to understand the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Generally, people don't understand the pastimes of Krishna. They are thinking Krishna to be some ordinary person. They're thinking Krishna just to be someone out of history. They don't understand that Lord Krishna is not the ordinary person, but he is Swayam Bhagavan. He is the original supreme personality of Godhead as described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. In the first canto, third chapter, Sutta Goswami had been asked to describe the Lord's different incarnations. And after describing all of the different incarnations, after mentioning them all, then he mentioned Lord Krishna. He said, Ete chamsa kalapumsa 
Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam. Indriyani Bakulam Loki in Mirdayanti Yuge Yuge, right? That the Lord comes. Lord Krishna comes, but he is not avatar. He is Bhagavan Swayam. He's avatar E. He's the origin of all of the avatars. Everyone, everything comes from Krishna. Everyone. Even Vishnu has his origin in Krishna. Lord Rama also comes originally from Krishna. It is Lord Sri Krishna who is the original Swayam Bhagavan. And the more we hear the pastimes of Lord Krishna, the more we will understand and we will develop faith and we will be convinced that Lord Krishna is the supreme. And the goal of life, Prem Punarto Mahan, to develop love for Lord Sri Krishna. So we have this opportunity coming up. We're coming up to Sri Krishna Janmastami. We want to understand more the topics of Lord Krishna. So we will stop and ask if there's any questions. Anyone has any questions? Yes, Hare Krishna. Take the microphone. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, this uh, you have told today. Uh, when we are chanting alone in the room, can we think about the insects and all that? Uh, like, can we pray for the insects? Can we? Can it? Will it apply to the insects and all that? Well, when you're in your room and you're chanting, the insects are there, so they're hearing. Yeah. No, can we think about the insects? It's just uh, family. I mean. okay. When you think about them, what do you think about? No, them? I pray for them. Yeah. You can, you're already praying for them if you're chanting yeah, okay. and they're hearing, right? You're chanting, they're in the room with you, so they're benefiting okay. by your chanting. Okay. That chanting is a prayer. You don't need to pray anything else, just simply chant the holy name and all the insects will benefit simply by your chanting. So you don't have to worry. That is real compassion on all living entities, the chanting of the holy name. Chanting of the holy name is a prayer, and it's also the answer to the prayer. It's both the prayer and it's an answer to the prayer. The Maha Mantra is a prayer. It, Srila Prabhupada explained the meaning as, by saying, O Supreme Lord Krishna, O Supreme Energy of the Lord Hari, O Supreme Lord Rama, please engage me in your service. Please accept me. Please give me the strength to serve you. So like that, when we are chanting Hare Krishna mantra, it's a prayer to the Lord. We're asking for service. And by chanting, we are serving. We're doing service. Chanting in itself is service to Lord Krishna. And it's the best service. It's the highest service. It is said that chanting of the holy name includes all the nine different kinds of devotional service. When we are chanting Hare Krishna mantra, it includes also hearing, remembering, worshipping the lotus feet, offering prayers, serving, befriending, surrendering everything. If we are chanting purely without offense, then all of the nine different kinds of devotion are there within our chant. So keep chanting. Yes? Yes, Prabhu? When Krishna went to kidnap Rukmini, was Arjuna along with him? No. 
Krishna had come from Dwarka, right? The Brahmana had brought the letter to Dwarka. So Krishna came from Dwarka. He came with this on his chariot and he brought the Brahmana also with him on the chariot. But not Arjuna, no. Arjuna was there when they met Kalindi, when he got Kalindi for his wife. That time, Arjuna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble wishes to your lotus feet. Uh, today in this lecture, you told that uh, Lord Krishna has 16 main potency, and that potency expanded in 1000. So that is a 16,000. Uh, but 16,100 uh, that time Prince said. So what about other 100? Just <laughs> it came in mind now. Yeah, I don't know about these other 100. We're not told. I just know what the charyas tell us. They didn't comment on the 100. There is one question in uh, online Maharaj. Two associates of Lord Balram, two associates of Lord Balram, Jambavan and Vivida in Ramayana fought with Krishna and Balram. Jambavan could understand Krishna to be non-different than Lord Rama, whereas Vivida did not understand the glories of Lord Balram. How to understand this Maharaj? Yes, how to understand that fact that Dwavida fought with Lord Balaram. Dwaveda had performed many sinful activities. That is the problem. Dwaveda had become very degraded. He'd done a lot of very bad things from the time, since the time of Lord Rama. Initially, the time of the Battle of Lanka, he was good. He was in the associ good association. But again, Dwavida got into bad association, just like we explained about Boma. Boma, we said he was, it's a child, he was good, but he became corrupted, he became degraded by bad association. So similarly, Dwavida, he became very sinful. He, be, he was, he was uh, doing many stupid things. And then he tried to also he tried to pull off the clothes of the gopis and Lord Balaram. He was, he was, uh, Lord Balaram was there at that time with the gopis and Lord Balaram was enjoying the company of the young ladies and Dravida became envious and became very, he became attracted. To, he wanted to enjoy the young women and he did very obscene activities. He began to show his private parts to the young ladies and doing many very obscene activities. And then he tried to pull, pull the clothes of some of the young ladies. So then Lord Balaram decided he had to be killed. So it was a little different from Jambavan. Jambavan, he was he was actually, he just had, he found the Shaimantaka jewel and he brought it to his, his place and gave it to his child. But when somebody came in, when Lord Krishna came in, he just thought some intruder and he didn't recognize Krishna. And so they fought. But Jambavan, because he was more pure in his, he hadn't done any of the bad activity. He had not done any sinful activities like Dwavida. So Jambavan was able to understand this was Lord Krishna. The behavior was very different. Jambavan's behavior was much better than Dwavida. And so that's why Jambavan was able to understand this, is, this person is not different from Lord Rama. Thank you, Mari. All right, any other question then? Okay, then we'll finish here. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki.
going back to bring the key. जय श्री श्री जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्रा माई की जाय सो आफ्टर दिस वंडरफुल फास्ट टाइम एंड अ वर्चुअल टूर ऑफ द्वारका लेट इज ऑल एक्सप्रेस अवर हार्ट फेल ग्रेटिट्यूड टू महाराज बाय लाउडली चैंटिंग वंस हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे with a very heavy heart would like to announce a, a very sad news his grace anadi jagannath prabhu his grace anadi jagannath prabhu from sheshadripuram temple he left his body yesterday in uh, it, it was a fatal accident uh, we all know prabhu many of us know prabhu how much seva he was involved in in fact that day also i want to send that he was actually delivering prasadam and then he did not return back so so let us all chant one sare krishna mahamantra hare krishna hare hare rama hare rama 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 hare 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 krishna hare krishna 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 हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे टुडेज प्रसादम स्पॉन्सर इज हिज ग्रेस रविलोचन गौरंग प्रभु एंड द ऑकेशन ऑफ श्रिया डॉटर्स बर्थडे विच इज ऑन ऑगस्ट फर्स्ट एंड श्रुति हुज बर्थडे वॉज ऑन जून ट्वेंटी एट So let us all chant for this wonderful devotee, so that they can progress nicely in the spiritual world. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So those who all have collected the Janmashtami donation coupons, uh, we would request that if you have collected the Lakshmi, please hand it over uh, to Swayam Prakash Prabhu or His Grace. Uh, rukmini ranga krishna prabhu so that they can start the accounting part so please ensure that as soon as you get this uh, donations please please hand it over to prabhu ji and also those who still want to take probably it is still available you can even talk to swayam prakash prabhu and collect the donation coupons uh we had last time announced about bhadra purnima so bhadra purnima is arriving it is in it is some, some september 10th so please ensure that you have devotees who want to take or or your friends or relatives those who want to collect who do you want if you want to gift bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam copies please reach out to rukmini ranga krishna prabhu or swayam prakash prabhu to collect your copies and uh, there is one devotee who is requesting for prayers his name is shripati shridhar das prabhu prabhu is undergoing a surgery tomorrow that's first of august regarding a cardio related issues so he is requesting special prayers so that the so that he can with a speedy recovery so let us all chant once hari krishna mahamantra for this wonderful devotee hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare the upcoming yatras which we had announced earlier also those devotees who still want to take benefit of this yatras uh, i'll just quickly call out the uh, the yatras that are planned August thirteenth and fourteenth, that is to Melukote, Tondanur. August thirteenth and fourteenth, September ninth and tenth, it is to Udupi and Murudeshwar. September seventeenth to twenty fifth is to Naimisharanya, Ayodhya, Nepal, Muktinath, and Jharkhand. There are flyers which have been posted outside, so if you can, you can get more details also.
the last dates for registration melukote and tondonur will be august 5th last date for udupi and murudeshwar yatra registration last date will be august 15th and the last last date for so so the yatra for naimisharanya ayodhya nepal and muktinath only five seats are available so those who all still interested please contact dati madhuri mataji mataji will be here in the office so please please do register and please also collect the janmashtami flyers that you can distribute to your neighbors so that they can also participate when you are inviting them for the janmashtami and uh, we will have a, a small talk on fundraising after the, right now and we'll have aarti after that hari krishna sundarup shambhu Hare Krishna can we have uh, someone go call the devotees in the courtyard to come inside both prabhus and mataji is one from one mataji can go and call all of them inside also prabhus can you all go and call prabhus inside daive to ella devotees walagade barbeku hare krishna ಪ್ರಭು ಅವ್ರ ಕಡೆಯಿಂದ ಒಬ್ರು ಆಚೆ ಹೋಗಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ನ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡ್ ಬನ್ನಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, prasadam guaranteed for all of you. Okay, so I will speak in English 
and uh, prabhuji will speak in kannada so that uh, we address both if i speak in both languages i may lose the flow so hence we are resorting to this method okay so what is this topic can anyone can anyone speak what is the topic about what is fundraising ha huh? ఆయ్ డబ్బులు కావాలి జన్మాష్టమికి డబ్బులు కావాలి ఎందుకు డబ్బులు కావాలి వై వీ నీడ్ మనీ ఫర్ జన్మాష్టమి నో నాట్ రిక్వైర్డ్ మనీ విల్ ఫ్లో ఫ్రమ్ ద స్కై సో యూ కెన్ ఈజ్లీ సెలబ్రేట్ బై ద మర్సీ ఆఫ్ ద లాట్ విల్ ఫ్లో సో లెట్స్ టాక్ అబౌట్ దిస్ ఇట్స్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ టాపిక్ అండ్ వాట్ రోల్ దట్ ఈచ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ అస్ హ్యావ్ in this fundraising topic so iga now fundraising bagge charche maartivi so ellaru idralli bhagavahisbeku anta kelkontivi okay so first we'll talk about vision and goals so what is vision and goals the vision we want to have for our temple is year on year we're celebrating lots of festivals and janmashtami the mother of all festivals so rather than going and asking for funds for each and every festival what do we want to do we want to raise as much as possible fund collection for janmashtami and the rest of the year give lot of care back to the donors and the congregation so that way there is no thought process oh there's a festival left to run for fundraising i don't need to do that sounds good so we do only once a year for which festival we fundraise janmashtami for you know there could be some donations available people can come and donate but mainly that we are going to do as a drive is for janmashtami so now fundraising bandu varshadalli onde ondu sarthi now madakke prayatna madana adu janmashtami samayadalli adu ad nantara ಇಡೀ ವರ್ಷ ನಾವು ಆ ಡೋನರ್ಸ್ಗೆ ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮ ಒಂದು ಕೇರ್ನ ಕೊಡಬೇಕು ಸೊ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ನಾವು ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ನೋಡ್ಕೊಂಡಾಗ ಅವ್ರ ಜೊತೆ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಶಿಪ್ ಬೆಳೆಸ್ಕೊಂಡಾಗ ಬೇರೆದೆಲ್ಲ ಬೇರೆ ಆಟೋಮೆಟಿಕ್ ಆಗಿ ಬೇರೆ ಫಂಡ್ಸು ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ನಾವು ವಿ ಕಾನ್ ಸೇ ಓಕೆ ಎನಿವೇ ಜನ್ಮಾಷ್ಟಮಿ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ರೈಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಪಿಟನ್ ಫಂಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಇಯರ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ವಿ ಕಾನ್ ಡೂ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ನೋ ವೇರ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಜರ್ನಿ ದಟ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿಗಿನ್ and somewhere in 5 years 6 years 7 years we'll achieve this model what is this model raise once a year and celebrate throughout the year okay so ee model ge hesaru bandu varshakke ondu sarthi now fund raising maadbeku amale idi varsha adanna celebrate maadbeku anta innu allige bandilla 5 6 varshadalli ee tara ee model na successful agi implement maadbeku anta aase hari krishna ha ah. so just because i want to do something like that can it happen like that i want to eat apple can i just eat apple just by thinking no what should i do if i want to eat apple what should i do first i should have a desire right what is the desire that i should eat an apple okay just having desire can i eat the apple yes no no why because there is no apple to eat <laughs> so what i need to have i need to have the enthusiasm which is nothing but follow up actions to fulfill my desire so desire with enthusiasm will get my apple is it true just by my activity will i get my apple what's the third component first is desire enthusiasm what's the third no determination determination already there desire enthusiasm we've already reached we need prayers right so prayers from the lord will actually make us get the apple right so what are the three mantra words what's the first one desire can we all loudly speak desire second enthusiasm, enthusiasm to make the desire happen then finally prayers. prayers is when the lord awards right if we have faith in these three words definitely we will accomplish this journey what is this journey 
in five years from now, we want to have a model that for Janmashtami, we'll raise all the funds and spend throughout the year. Okay? So, on the hand of Tinbeku, Andre, now Ase Padibeku, Adad Mele, you know, Utsaha Dinda Hogi, now Hanan Karidi Maditandu Togol TV. Ade Riti, E model Ali, now with an implement Marbeku Andre, Model Nedu, Namali Ase Herbeku. Adnantara Utsaha Herbeku, Nan Martini Anta. Konege, Bhagavantana Krepe. So, prayers in the Ido Sadhivagat. So, let's see what is this detail. Next. Okay. So why we should have such a desire? Desire to raise funds for the organization. So now we are all, you know, practicing bhakti at our home through our sadhana, right? Chanting, reading books, performing Mangala Arati, preparing, you know, boga, offering prasadam. All of them we do. But we need to have a place like a temple, which in Kali Yuga, a place like a temple is the place for bhakti, the center of bhakti. So when we come here, we get association, we congregate, we share our realizations, and then we together progress in bhakti. So if the temple is the one that serves each one of us with bhakti nourishment, it is very important that we serve the temple with services and funds. If you don't give those services and funds to the temple, the temple does not manifest or sustain. So it is each, everyone's responsibility that we have, that we have to do this fundraising as the fifth regulatory principle. Then what happens? The temple nicely manifests, serves each one of us with spiritual elevation, we all go back home, back to God. Hare Krishna. So, hey, ge na wo sadhana bhakti marti bi maneli, mangalarti chanting, bhoga offering, aderi thi. Devasthana no namge beko. Devasthana dinda na wo preach mardi bere or na karasti bi. So, illi successful agi na wo mada ke na wo namma duty namdo na wo illi fundraise mada ke prayatna badi beko. So, agle adu successful agate. So if you don't raise funds for the temple, can festivals be celebrated? Festivals cannot be celebrated. So we have one of a prime duty is to give to the temple. The more we give, the more nourishment we get, spiritual nourishment we have. So there's nothing to be shy about it. Those days, if you read the book, Watering the Weeds, you will learn His Holiness Giriraj Swami, how he spent his entire life in fund collecting and Prabhupada personally training him. So such books are there. You should read such books and we get ideas how we can become a wonderful fund collector for the success of the moment. So now yes to now Namma Prayatna Kortevi as to Namge Tirga Vapasa Namge Sigate. Sadhana Bhakti Agli Illa fundraising agli illa donation agli. So, Prabhu our Herald Ange, Parampuja Giriraj Maharaj Auru, Idi watering the weeds. Watering the weeds. Watering the weeds and Tavandu, our own Pustakavano Bardidare. So, Adrali, our Bekadas to fund collection early, our Gatumba experience it to Srila Prabhupada Re, our na personal agi train Maditro. So now we're going to call it as fundraising ideas to reality. Look, some people call it as fundraising, some people call it as donation, some people call it as gift, some people call it as share, some people call it as volunteer. Whatever you want to call it as, you call. But at the end of the day, what should happen? You should raise the funds. Okay? Is this clear? Okay, so let's see what is this. There are three things. The first rule of fundraising. The first rule of fundraising is you should do what is called as your pre-work. If you don't do your pre-work, you cannot be a good fundraiser. You will go to people, you will come back with failure, then you will think no one in this world donates. <laughs> huh? The frog in the well. No one in this world donates, then you will stop fundraising forever. Because the problem is we go with a 
poor approach. We do not know how to do it. So hence, we're going to learn certain methods and techniques now. The rule number one, which is called as a pre-work. What is a pre-work? Learn all the schemes nicely and clearly. So for example, if there is a seva called Archana Seva, learn Archana Seva, what is it? How it is done? What is the pricing? When they can come and do? All questions asked by the donors, you should be able to answer. If you wonder and scratch your head or not give proper information, they'll be wondering, why should I donate money? Maybe next time, maybe or he'll give 50 rupees or 100 rupees. We are not here begging. We are sons and daughters of the most opulent Lord. We are not here for begging. We are here to give back to the society in a very, very big manner. So hence, do the pre-work, know your schemes nicely. You should know every detail of the schemes nicely. So we'll teach you how to do that now. So model ne heje bandhu pre-work. Andre now fundraising maado ki nu munche kelondu homework maar ko bek naavo. So prati ondu scheme ali yena ni the details alla nammali namge gotir beko. So iba ondu tulsi archana seve antairatte for example. Andre le yena details the yes to adikke donation kor beka gatte cost to. Yao Yao Same Dali Yao the Yen Nadita. Yella details go tirabuka. Aga now hogi bere or ge approach marbodu. Yao do yenu planning marden and approach Mardaga. Yaru Munde Baro de la Kodake. Namgu Gotirala. Now Ale Nam Vishwasavano Kalkon Tivi. Amele Konege Yaro donate Madalanta on the Nirdarake Banbur Tivi. On the simple example, some people asked, Yes to donation Kotare, how much donation people will give? Just for your information, in our temple, our Dharmadikari Seva, who knows what's the right amount for Dharmadikari Seva in our temple? 8,000. Like 8,000. Is it correct? Huh? No confidence. That means you all know now. How much is uh, Dharmadikari Seva? You don't know? How we can be a fundraiser? We should know. So what's the right answer? 51,000 is the correct answer, right? <laughs> so 1 lakh 8,000. So please know how much is Dharmadikari Seva. In uh, Hare Krishna Hill Temple, which is Rajajinagar, Dharmadikari Seva is 1 crore 8 lakhs. And so many donors are pouring in to sign up for it. That means what? Enough people ready to donate. But what are we doing? Quietly sitting at home. Oh, nanage nachke aktai de, nanage oh kishta illa. And we're just sitting at home. See? Opportunity is there. We don't want to take it. So what we should do? What is rule number one? Pre-work. What's the pre-work? Speak. What's the pre-work? learn the schemes properly. At 12 o'clock, Sundaru Prabhu is going to call me. And what I should get up and answer? All the schemes thoroughly. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't call you. <laughs> okay. So, Prabhu Aru on the exercise Madhadriga, Dharmadikari yes to anta. Sumar 99% devotees hela kagila. Ila and you sankocha madhir bahudu. So, um, Hare Krishna Hill Devastandali, one the Koti, and to Lakshaide Adre Ali donations Kodake to Sumar Jana Bartare, Adar Arthaeno, General Kodake Idare, Beka the Stu Generu, donation Kodak Idare. Now our guests Ariagi approach Madre, Nam Devastanako Bandu Kodare. What is good? So, I mean. Okay, so Higa, E. Varsha, now WhatsApp message Aki Divi. Videos are not there. Huh? Was the videos good? Attractive? Do you want to forward your donors? Okay, already done. Very nice. So all of you should do it, not just one or two doing it. Collective responsibility is very important. If there are 100 people in this room, just one or two doing is of no use. All 100 should do. When 100 of us do, Collectively, we're very strong. So many things can happen. 
Okay. So now look at these are the Seva details you have. Now this poster is going to reach you very shortly on your WhatsApp. This poster has what is Annadana Seva? When you donate for Annadana Seva, what benefits do you get? What is the amount to donate? Which is the link? Which is the QR code? How to donate? How to come to the temple office and donate? All these details are mentioned in these brochures. Is it clear? When you go to tell someone Annadana Seva, Annadana Seva, yen kodtira? Yesjana kodtira, itsaura kodtira? How you will give? Where will you donate this? All these questions they will ask. You can use this to explain them. There are other services like silver kalasha abhishekam. What is silver kalasha abhishekam? So what do you get out of this? We'll talk about this program very shortly. There are things like Rajbog Seva. So Rajbog Seva, what will happen in this Rajbog Seva? How much should I donate? What is the benefit do I get out of it? So these things are written as a literature format and you can use this to talk to your donors so ee tara bere bere schemes ide annadana seva silver kalasha seva ee tara prathi ondu details adakke eshtu hana kodbekagutte adanna pay madakke devasthanadalli hege pay madabodu qr code inda hege pay madabodu ella details namge share martare temple congregation ge so, either an hour complete homework. Either not detail again, now either now oath call back. Next slide. So, for example, this is another poster which we sent. One don't seva, one don't praise either. So, there was one person who asked me, Oh, Prabhu, you are asking me to pay 60,000 rupees for Vastra Alankara? Is the dress so expensive? Why? I didn't scratch my head. I clearly explained him. Then he was convinced. What did I tell him? Oh, Vastalanka Seva 61,000 is not just for one deity. It is, there are many deities, Murtis are there. This is Radha and Krishna, Jagannath Baladev Subhatra. I'm talking about Mula Murtis now. Then Srila Prabhupada. Then there's also Utsa, Utsa Vigraha, Abhishekam Vigraha. There is Julan Vigraha. So for all of them, this is the vastra that you're giving. It is not just the vastra, you're also giving paraphernalia, the jewels, right? So all those things constitute a larger amount and your 60,000 will only contribute to a portion of that amount. So, vastra lankara seva, obru keeladru, bari vastra ke arvatthandu savara adheg sadhyanta. So now it really are the mark of details. Vastra Lankara Seva is 61,000 yet a key and re Jagannath Baladev Subhadra, Mate Radha Krishna Dittis Gay, Srila Prabhupada Gay, Adaldene, Ella Utsah Murti, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra, Gornita Dittis, Ilrigo, Sersi Istagate. So you details in Avila Trilkombe. Adaldene Abharanagalo, Navo, Bhagavantanagay, Arpisti, Vastra Lankara Seva. So like that, you should know the details of all the sevas and their amounts so that it's easy to have a wonderful conversation with your donors. And they'll be pleased. Oh, if I donate this, all these benefits I get and they will come on forward to donate with you. Okay. Next slide. Yeah. So now, how to make the best with your donors? So you're going to meet a donor. How are you going to get best mileage out with your donors? Okay. So you all know KYC? What is KYC? Our finance people know very well. Know your customer. So what's the meaning of know your customer? What's the meaning of know your customer? Yes. You should know what is the nature of the customer you're dealing with. Here, customer means donor. Whether the donor is in business, whether the donor is in job, whether the donor is high profile, low profile, whether he has a heart to donate, whether he's very philanthropic, very liberal or not, he's atheist, everything you should know about that person to a, you know, some level before you approach him. That's why it's called know your customer. If you do not know your customer, you don't know what to talk to him, 
you do not know how much to talk to him. So you will not be successful. So the first step is to know your customer. After you know your customer, you have to profile them. What's meaning of profile them? Okay, e customer, this customer, okay, last time he gave 10,000 or he has the ability to give 25,000, he has the ability to give 50,000, then accordingly prepare your mind to tell that seva. Don't show the list. 100 rupees go seva either, 1 lakh go seva either. What is the natural tendency? To choose 100. So don't do that mistake. Pick the right seva, profile your customer, and write against the name. Rajesh, write him. Oh, this person will do copper Kalasha Abhisheka. And this is 6,108. So profile that very clearly, write down in a piece of paper. It's very important to do that. This is how you know who your customers are. Okay, that's your second step. The third step, once you know what you're going to do, prepare your mind what to talk about that particular seva. If you're going to profile someone for Pushpa Lankara seva, what you need to speak to him, be very clear. Don't stammer, don't make up new things, don't make up stories. Be very clear and firm as to what you're going to speak. So you know your customer, Anta. Andre Navo, donors na chanagi tilkombeko. So yar job alidare, yar business alidare, yar high net worth individuals alidare, yar ali yest capacity there, idan ella now chanagi, Artha Marco Beko. Your profiling now Marco Beko. So bere bere save galo. Our capacity takka na wo aurge aseve galan na tours beko head beko. So high net individual ge na wo yaudo vandu saave rupee do save tours bardo. So is to basic common sense na malir beko. So yeri thi na heado vaglo schemes ella chana gothi dre na yauri thi yu stammer mado dilla confuse ago dilla. Okay, so now we are going to meet the customers. Right? We go to meet the donors. So when we meet the donors, what we have done already, what's the, what is the pre-work we've already done? Two pre-works. What's the first pre-work? Huh? No, what's the first pre-work? Scheme. Know your product very well. What's the second pre-work? KYC. Profile your customers very clearly. So these two are very important. Okay, now... You're very clear, now you're meeting the customer. So when you meet the customer, it's all about psychology now. It's not anymore about your uh, skills or anything. It's about your psychology. Based on the mood of your customer at that point in time, appropriately place the right scheme in front of him. Do not place more than one scheme to him. If you see that he is reciprocatory, hey, our interest towards Taitare is more interested than offer in the next scheme. Aim for one scheme and complete the collection. It may be even 500 rupees, no problem. It may be even 1 lakh rupees, no problem. But aim for one and collect that scheme correctly. Make sense? So now, we donor to the donor. They will to our one scheme matra heli, our capacity prakara, our give one scheme matra heli, detail lagi other benefits bagge heli. In that conversation with your customers, show the video of the venue, show the video of the program, give them all the brochures, give them Mahaprasadam and the gifts that he needs to get. Sign up for the donation. Even if he doesn't give donation, still do all these things. Surely, next time, he's going to call you and your donation is going to become successful. So, please explain about the care he's going to be given. For example, if someone is going to donate 5,000 rupees, tell him how he'll be recognized when he comes to the venue, how he'll be cared for, and what are the benefits he will get when he comes to the venue with his family. Explain them thoroughly. So that they get really enthusiastic. Hey, I'm waiting for this event to happen. Come on, take this money. So that is what will happen with your conversation with your customers. So now, nam donors ge video tours beko. Venu video tours beko. Heg nadi tai to munche janmashtmi video agli. Adal dene aur ge receipts kodi. Receipts mathe mahaprasadamu kodi. 
plus what else? Uh, ಅದಲ್ ಅದಲ್ದೇನೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದಾಗ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಏನ್ ಕೇರ್ ಸಿಗತ್ತೆ ಆ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಹೇಳಿ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಲೈನ್ ಇರಬಹುದು ಇಲ್ಲ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ಮಾಡಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದು ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಇರತ್ತೆ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಸಿವ್ ಇರತ್ತೆ ಡೊನೇಷನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಈ ತರ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕು ನೀವು ಕೇರ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸಿಲ್ವರ್ ಕಲರ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅವರ್ ಫ್ಲಾಗ್ಶಿಪ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ every year after year we going to promote silver kalash as the main program juhu bombay temple they have silver kalash as a flagship program one silver kalash is 49900 okay and do you know how many silver kalash that they distribute every year is real silver huh? it's not artificial silver real silver do you know how many this year they have already crossed 1200 and change How much is 1,200 into 50,000? Who can do, who's good in mathematics? You don't need to be good in mathematics to do this. How much, Mataji? 1,200 into 50,000. Six crores. Can you imagine? Six crores. And our country, the financial capital is Bombay. And do you know which is the second and third richest uh, city in our country? it's bangalore which is third richest city in the country do you know that for the matter so it is not that you are living in a very poor city that there is no money here there is enough money what is the poverty here what is the poverty with us here the poverty is here not here okay so you have to realize that and you have to go do that so ಈ ಸಿಲ್ವರ್ ಕಲಶ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಅಂತಿದೆ ಇದನ್ನ ನಾವು ಈ ದೇವಸ್ಥಾನದಲ್ಲಿ ಫ್ಲಾಗ್ಶಿಪ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಂತ ಪ್ಲಾನಿಂಗ್ ಇದೆ ಸೊ ಜುಹು ದೇವಸ್ಥಾನದ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟರು ಪ್ರಭು ಅವರು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ನೈನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಸುಮಾರು ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದು ಪ್ರತಿ ಒಂದು ಕಲಶ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ಗೆ ಕಲಶ ಸಿಲ್ವರ್ ಕಲಶ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ಗೆ ಸೊ ಹಂಗಾಗಿ ಸಾವಿರ ಜನ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಸಾವಿರ ಸಾವಿರ ಇನ್ನೂರು ಜನ ಬಂದ್ ಮುಂದೆ ಬಂದು ಡೊನೇಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಬರೀ ಇದು ಒಂದು ಸ್ಕೀಮಗ್ ಮಾತ್ರ ಅದು ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ಸ್ ಅಷ್ಟು ಫಂಡ್ ರೇಸ್ ಮಾಡಿತ್ತು ಸೊ ಇದು ನಡೆದಿರೋದು ಬಾಂಬೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮುಂಬೈಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಏನ್ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಮೂರನೇ ಸ್ತರದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದೀವಿ ನಾವು ದುಡ್ಡಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಹಂಗಾಗಿ ಬಡತನ ಯಾವುದು ಏನು ಇಲ್ಲ ಬರೀ ಬಡತನ ಇದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ ತಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇರಬಹುದು ಅಂತ ಪ್ರಭು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಸಿಲ್ವರ್ ಕಲಶ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ನೇಮ್ ಯಾರ್ ಡೋನರ್ ಇದಾರೋ ಅವರ ಹೆಸರು ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ನೇಮ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಲೇಸರ್ ಪ್ರಿಂಟೆಡ್ ಆನ್ ಸಿಲ್ವರ್ ಕಲಶ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಬುಕ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸಿಲ್ವರ್ ಕಲಶ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಗಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ದಮ್ ಸೊ ಅಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೇರ್ ನೇಮ್ ವೆನ್ ದೇ ಕಮ್ ದೇಲ್ ಬಿ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಫೈವ್ ಟೆನ್ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ನೋ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ದೇಲ್ ಬಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಯಾರಿಟಿ ದೇಲ್ ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಆಫರ್ ಮಿಲ್ಕ್ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ರಾಧಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ಡೇ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ you also get special prasadam they will be given special seating prasadam that they can have they can also take silver kalash along with them as memories good memories with them as maha prasad right so this is a silver kalash program this year i think we have done something like 18 to 20 silver kalash so all glories to those devotees who have done that and our plan is to reach 50 100 200 year on year and slowly make this as a big flagship program so if you all joined the party together we can make this happen so that's the objective thank you so e silver kalasha program alli idu kone divasa bandu 6th august 6th august olagade e scheme alli donation maadabodu edi kutumba bandu bhagavantanige milk abhishekam maadabodu adaldene ya silver kalasha adanna manegu thagonu hogabodu So, 6th August, Admel Madhra Kuda, Silver Kalash Sigathe. But the only thing is, uh, Silver Kalash Mele, our donor name, Irodila. But they will get all other things as originally planned. Okay, next slide. Okay, so now, okay, Prabhuji, everything looks good. Where do I find my customers? Where do I find my donors? That is the biggest challenge. Okay, so now I am showing you something, what is called as a tree. what is this tree it's a fruit tree right so we are interested in the fruits of the tree the fruits right okay so please see this let us go and 
Which is the easiest fruit to pluck? Low hanging. So similarly, we have to find the easiest customer to get to our need. So how do I do that? Take a piece of paper and pen, write down the list of your potential donors. The first list will be your family, kith and kin, your family members, your uncles, aunts, cousins, grandmothers, grandpas, everyone is the list you write. And that list is very simple. You know them. And in that list you write, who can be a potential donor that you can approach them. So make list number one, which is called a family list, right? Your list is your family list. The second list actually is a much easier list, which is called is your WhatsApp list. What do you do with your WhatsApp? You take your WhatsApp phone number. I was just checking yesterday. My WhatsApp phone number has about 3000 contacts. So now what we can do, each of you, please take your WhatsApp. You'll see a large contact list. Scroll them one by one. Out of 3,000, 2,000, whatever contacts you have, I need you to pick just five member list. That's all. Five from your family, five from your WhatsApp potential list. Okay. And third is your potential donors. Hey, I've seen this person last time somewhere. I can remember, I can go. So that's your third list. So totally make three lists. Each list you should have first family members, five members, WhatsApp, five members. The third list, one or two members, that's all. So totally, your target is to make a list of just 10 members. If you are able to get 1,000 rupees per member, how much have you collected donation? 10,000. And if there are 100 people in this room, how much is 100 into 10,000? 10 lakhs. That's it. To reach 10 lakhs is no big deal. It is the collective effort that makes the big difference. I want all of you to really participate in this. And you're doing this for pleasure of Guru and Gauranga. So take this seriously, make this list. And after you make this list, profile your list. My uncle who stays in Mangalore, oh, he can donate thousand rupees, no problem. Put that number. And what seva? Put that seva. So like that in each of the list, put the seva and the amount and prepare this list nicely. Once this list is ready, then begin your phone calling or visit them personally. Okay. So now our donor list is very easy to make. First of all, our family has five potential donors. Our list is 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 five potential donors. Friends, colleagues, neighbors, yara drir bodo. So our allu on the ay general list mad kondo our ge approach madi. Adal deno nimge gotiro munche yaro donation madir tare. So our no nivo approach mad bodo. So iriti pratyo bro devotee na wo obo brinda bari on the average thousand rupees collect madro. Ah, hatt janarinda na wo hatt saavera collect mad bodo. Angagi. On the new congregational devotees, all share condo, pratyo bro on the average ten thousand rupees collect mada thre, adu hat laksha agathe. Iti eno raise mada the ya yaudo kasta illa. Okay, next slide. This is the last part of the fundraising slide that I want to talk about, which is called as create a chain link. Okay, so do you know what is a chain link is? So you you have a bike. You'll see there's a chain. Each pieces of it are interconnected. That's how they become a chain link. So here, Martira, you when you meet your first customer, if your deal is successful, you got thousand rupees donation. Don't immediately walk away from him. Of course, you've given prashad, you've enlightened the program, everything is done, but that is not the end of it. What do you do? Ask him, sir, can I get one more reference from you where I can go collect the funds? Right now, what happens? He will think about for a minute and he will refer his friend, his aunt, his uncle. Now, when he refers, what happens? 50% of your job is already done. Why? Oh, Venkatesh is given, I will also give. That will be the mood of Ramesh. And no more cross checks required. Why? Because you won the heart of Ramesh because of Venkatesh, 50% already done. So your job is very easy. 
So create a chain link. So from every successful donor, create only one references from him and create the chain link. You will be able to get not five, 20, 30, very easily to get your donor list. You don't need to go shop to shop. You don't need to go anywhere, not to do any of those things. Simple, use your intelligence and make a chain link. Once you make a chain link, have a registry. Write down your chain link into your registry and keep track of your customers. So now on the chain link, Marco Beko, model ne set of donors in the our atra pratyo bratra one the reference matra now kyalko beko. So uh one the reference in the now uh bare or atra hogi uh donation na raise marbodo. So here it is uh one uh one reference now either la e details and now on the register ali barko bodo. So what is the power of registry? New year show mad bodo. This year you could have done it, but next year you'll forget. So keep this donor list registry nicely maintained with you. Next year, when you open this registry, where do you start? You don't start from zero. You start from 10. Third year, you start from 20. Fourth year, you start from 30, 40. Very easily, you can make your donor list to grow and your registry to grow. And you can do your wonderful service. Yearly one service fundraising drive for the benefit of, for the pleasure of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. So, this is the donor register. We have a lot of donors. We have a reference to the next year, 30, 40. This is the increase. So, now we have a lot of people who are doing it. We have a lot of donors to register. Importantly, you have a relationship with them. Okay, next. So, this is the most important point. To your donors, you would have committed a lot. Sir, you please come. We'll serve you prashad. We'll take care of you. There'll be separate queue. You'll get this gift. So many things you would have told them. Now your job doesn't end there. Oh, I've told. Now it's the temple's response to do it. No, please ensure that on Janmashtami Day, your particular donors are cared for. Ensure that what time they're coming, please come and receive them nicely. And whatever you promised, do for them. That donor care, what you do, will give a lasting impression in their hearts. And every year, they're going to come back to you. Okay? So, our Atra now, Hana collect Madi, our Namartho Godola. So, Janmashtami Divsa now, our care Kodbeku, our Sahaya Madbeku, help Madbeku. Our gain benefits the other taka now, our care, not called back. So either an our donor care kotaga, our prati varsha or matte namatra approach martha. Okay, that ends. Happy Janmashtami. Okay, so will you all do this? Is it easy or it's difficult? It's quite easy, right? How many of you want to take your books and do this drive? You just have 18 days to do this. Do it for the pleasure of Krishna. All Acharyas today that are there, all the great sannyasis that are there today who are disciples of Srila Prabhupada, they went through this exercise with Srila Prabhupada. And because of their very you know, strained effort that they went through, today we have such a big organization. So let's also be part of that army and try to do this. Okay? Thank you so much. Hare Krishna.
take one one one. You take your net. You take take one and. Thank you. 